Long live the king. That's right, friends. Today we get to take a look at King Kong from NECA. <laughs> And King Kong, for those of you who don't know, is a giant ape, obviously. But I mean, you probably knew that. What you probably didn't know, or might not know, is that King Kong's actually in the public domain. So while you can make any giant gorilla figure you want and call it King Kong on the box, you can't really make it look like the movies, which are not in public domain. So this is pretty much NECA's own interpretation of King Kong, but I mean, it kind of looks like the 1933 original. I mean, look at the sculpt. Look how he has, like, an upright posture, which real gorillas obviously do not have, or real, you know, big apes, and the gorilla's, like, the biggest real ape in real life, I'm pretty sure. And he doesn't have the big protruding belly, which, you know, our attributes Marion C. Cooper got rid of on the original King Kong because he wanted him to look more like a character and, you know, more intimidating and more like a monster rather than a big goofy gorilla with a bulbous belly and, you know, all hunched over and stuff, which is something the Peter Jackson King Kong got really wrong. Like, he was essentially a giant gorilla and not a monster at all in that movie, and, you know, NECA's really taking it back to, like, the good old monster days. But sculpt, I mean, pretty good. I can't really knock it for accuracy to the film. I mean, this face looks uh, kind of like the 1933 face. I mean, like, I, I remember some scenes of the movie, but he never got cut up like this. Like, I mean, I mean, I guess he did, but we didn't really see blood on him, and well, maybe we did, but it wasn't red, so it was black and white, so it wasn't that noticeable, but I digress. Fur is sculpted everywhere, even inside the double joints. We've got double joints on the knees and the elbows, which is, you know, pretty good. That uh, The whole public domain issue is the reason Mezco gave us that, uh, you know, King Kong based on the book, by the way. And, you know, looking at these two side by side, which I will compare more later, but, like, the sculpt on the fur was way more uh, in-depth on the Mezco figure. But, I mean, NECA sculpts a little more subtle which i mean can be good because it makes them look bigger if the fur is smaller although it does get a bit bigger down here where it would hang more on like the forearms and then it gets you know faded away where you get to the skin parts and the skin looks all wrinkly leathery on the hands there same thing going on on the head fur just fades away and like oh, got like some tiny little ears way back up there on his head i notice and the sculpted on the teeth is pretty good looking it's got a tongue in there and teeth and everything that's sculpt all the way around. I can't really knock anything. I mean, they even got little peg holes, even though he's probably a bit too big for a standard NECA figure stand. Good, good, good. Sculpt all the way around. Even has the hairy teshi, which is kind of a rubbery part down here at the bottom. I mean, all this down here on the lower torso feels a little bit rubbery, especially in the back, which is probably, you know, to aid with articulation, obviously. Anyways, let's move on to the paint. So, first thing going on with King Kong, He's got some red blood battle damage here, there. I mean, it looks a little sloppy over here. Like, this is just blood dangling on the fur, but everything else is on a uh, scar, a scratch, you know, and even on his face. And it's painted pretty cleanly. But for the most part, other than that red blood and some stuff in the mouth, which we're going to look at in a minute, believe me, he's got his fur in, like, three colors. Like this dark, dark gray. See, like, right there? This, here's where it's, like, really noticeable, the three colors. There's, like, a dark gray, uh, a dark brown, and then a bright reddish brown, and on the elbows man that bright red brown sticks out like it does it really contrasts with like the darker shades like it goes from dark to reddish like wow i mean down here on the knees the knees are like a brighter reddish brown also but i mean look at look at the left one how it it blends nicely into the shin there and then it kind of contrasts with the thigh up there but i mean th those tones are everywhere i think they could have been blended a bit more because he looks a little spotty like there's a brown spot, and then it's all gray, and I don't know. It fades a lot better on the head, I think. Wow. Yeah, as I was saying, it fades a lot better on the head to where it gets to be like a brighter, brighter brown. The tire you go on the top of his head, and then it looks really nice transitioning there. It's got a little bit of red in his ear. Um, Pretty cool. The best thing on the head with the paint is inside of that mouth. Oh my goodness, look at those bone yellowish teeth and the glossy pink for the tongue and the innards of the mouth. That looks really good in there, even the roof of the mouth. Just awesome paint job. I mean, I, I think my only issue with the paint is, like, how the red sticks out here and there. I mean, pretty much the paint looks really good. And they got this blackness for his skin. And, like, the toenails are, like, a different shade of dark brown or black, even. And that's really clean on there. They even have, like, a little highlight on his knuckles, I guess. That, that looks a little odd. Like, it's a brown stripe. I mean, the colors are good. I just think, like, they could have blended them a bit better. Like, because in some parts they contrast really well, really well. You don't want them to contrast well. You want them to blend in. They can they stick out like a sore thumb in some parts, you know? But for the most part, 
this paint's pretty great. Now for articulation, Kong has a double ball joint at the head. It can go so far back and so far forward, which isn't much at all, really. And if you pop it off, you can see there's kind of a weird system in there where it's like a giant ball within the neck and then like it it's really stiff on the lower joint and not so much on the tiny little ball joint on top so his head pops off kind of easy but hey he's got alternate heads so i guess you can see that as a plus the arms are ball and hinge they go up oh not quite to 90 but they swivel all the way around cut at the bicep of course there are double hinged elbows with a good meaty chunk in the middle and both of them swivel actually then there's a hinge and swivel wrist at the end of each arm. These little sculpted bits at the end feel a little bit rubbery, not too rubbery. And it swivels all the way around, of course, so that's good. Diaphragm joint spins all the way around. It can go so far forward, which gives them a little hump in the back there. But it can also go so far back, which is, you know, pretty good for getting that chest beating pose, I guess. Go. Nothing at the waist except a giant rubber diaper, which helps out the hips, which are on ball joints and, uh, ratcheted for some reason they can go so far forward and a uh, decent back i guess and they can push the butt a bit and he can do the splits very far not that i think i've ever seen king kong do this i don't know why they're ratcheted i don't like that because it you know you can hear it there geez they're really ratchety but that limits the possibilities because you can only pose them in like so many you know so many spots and it's the only joint he has that's like that i guess maybe they're having issues with the hips anyways double knees he can't quite kick his butt, but I mean, it's pretty good. And they swivel at the top and the bottom of that joint, which is pretty cool. And then he's got hinge and pivot ankles, actually. Now, they don't seem to go that far back, but they do go a decent bit forwards, which is good because this guy ends up being a little bit back heavy and they pivot really good, like a, like a Marvel Legend figure, which is a little surprising because NECA's always given us like, you know, little cruddy ball joints on their ankles, and uh, I think this is a bit of an improvement. I don't know what they could have really added with articulation. I wish the head didn't pop off quite so easy, but other than that, great A job, NECA. Packaging for this guy was pretty big. I mean, he's King Kong after all, but it's pretty much the same height and width as a normal NECA Ultimate release that comes in a, you know, window box, but extra thick, and you can look forward to a Marty McFly review in the near future. It should be coming up very soon. In fact, it's pretty much as thick as, like, the deluxe newborn action figure, which which will also be a review in the near future. Shameless channel plugs aside, let's get back to looking at Kong's packaging, and it just has a generic photo of the figure on the front there, and generic logo. There's kind of a jungle backdrop in there. I'm not sure if that's, like, model maker foliage that NECA bought for the photo shoot, or if it's just, like, something they photoshopped in there. And then there's this weird sort of, I don't know, is it, like, tree bark or rock? Like, kind of, uh, fading around the edge there, the whole, the whole thing, like, it's just, I don't know, to make it look like weathered effect. Anyways, there's a picture of the roaring head on this side, the non-teethy head on that side, on the back, just more photos of the figure and his two heads, and then weird little separations for those photos of the tree branch thing going on there. Of course, the window on the front opens, and you can see the figure inside. Just a cool shadowy photo of the figure on the left there. No information on the title other than King Kong, because of course this is a public domain figure. Anyways, let's cut the tape on the bottom here and get this guy out. The card art on the back isn't just plain black, actually. If you see down there, there's like a little bit of grass, actually. But, I mean, it's black for the most part, so I don't know why they bothered. So Kong himself has a regular bendable wire twist tie on the back here. And then he's got a double sock tie thing going on on the front of the knees. That spare hand, that spare hand, the forearms, each of them. And then the spare head has a double sock tie. I mean, we couldn't get single sock ties, really. Like, I feel this is a little, a little extreme. Like, usually NECA just covers up the accessories like tape or just lets the friction of the bubble packaging hold them in. But, I mean, whatever. It's, we'll, we'll, we'll get them out of the packaging because I don't really intend to keep it anyway. Well, he's partway free, I guess, and I just wanted to escape before the body did. Haha, <laughs> I didn't have to cut those. You can just kind of stretch the hand out of them. Yeah, same goes for the head. This thing's pretty useless. You can just kind of hook the teeth out of them. Come on, Kong. Break your stupid shackles just like in that movie. Or just slip out of them. That works too. Uh, Kong is... Kind of free. Let me pop his head back on. Okay, so you ain't getting him back in that packaging once he's out. I mean, you, you can try, but there's not really anything to hold him in that blister. And then the packaging just takes up so much space in the first place that, I mean, I can't really say it's, you know, collector friendly, but hey, 
it is uh, certainly eye-catching on the shelves when you compare it to like all the other toyetic stuff that has colors that pop out and this is kind of like brown but i mean in terms of the ease of getting kong out uh i think it could have been a bit easier NECA. so i mean i think this packaging well while it looks nice in terms of functionality and collectability it ain't the best and i'm gonna throw it out honestly but i mean it's it it it, it, it could be better for accessories kong gets this alternate roaring head i guess even though that head he comes packaged with is totally already roaring and two open palm hands. Now the head, as I said before, is super easy to pop off. And uh, it's not very, there's no real satisfying click to when you pop it on. So it's kind of like just guessing game to squish. And uh, yeah, guess it's on good enough. Okay, I guess this head's just like more roaring than the other one. Because I mean, like the, you know, the gums are all exposed and stuff. But there are some other differences. Like if you look at the eyes in particular, the eyes on this head are stark white. In fact, they look like separate pieces that he comes packaged with. Whereas here, they're more of a pinkish hue that like blends into like the pink wash they gave around the little wrinkles of his eye. And then the mouth, I, the mouth seems to have a different deco. Like there is a black wash on the roof of the mouth in there. Whereas uh, the one in here was just, I don't know if I can get some light in there. It was just plain pink and then, you know, it looked great. But I mean, this is just sort of a different uh, way. Although unfortunately there's like a white blotch on the tongue there. I don't know how they got... Like a white blotch of paint slop there. I mean, I try to scrape it off a little, but like you can still see it there on the tongue. And it's like the, the eyes aren't even white. So I don't know where that white paint came from. There's no other white paint on the whole figure. What's, what's going on there, NECA? But it kind of has scarring in the same spots as the head he comes packaged with. Like, uh, you know, the red marks on the right cheek just below the eye there. And on the uh, left side of the upper lip there. But then there's scars up on the left brow here that he doesn't have on the more roaring head. I don't know. It would have been nice to get like a closed mouth head because I guess this isn't really roaring. This is more Kong like laughing, smiling, something like that. Although he's covered in scars, so I don't know why he's so happy. I mean, this is totally roaring. This is Battle Kong. Would have been nice to get like a, you know, non-Battle Damage Kong or closed mouth Kong or something like that, I think. But I'm just being picky, I guess. Anyways, Kong comes packaged with fist hands and let's pop on some of his, I don't want to say grabbing grip hands, but more just like open palm hands. Don't know what we're going to use him for, because he doesn't come with anything to hold, like an Andara or anything. But, yep, there he is, with the grip hands. Rawr! They're really good for the monster movie poses, I guess. Scale time! Our new King Kong stands at about 8 inches, or 21 centimeters tall. Which is probably the biggest issue with this guy, because at that height, he is way too big to fit in scale with a NECA Godzilla figure. I mean, you always want to do, like, King Kong versus Godzilla, right? And... King Kong is pretty much always smaller than Godzilla, never taller, so this just, like, really does not work out, unfortunately. Rawr! If anything, it's the Mezco Kong I reviewed, like, a year ago that fits in, like, a little bit better with Godzilla. You know, but even even still, he, he's too tall, I think. So maybe this problem is making the Godzilla figures too small. And speaking of that Mezco version, it's comparison time! As my friend Pixel Dan would probably love to say. Anyways... Mezco actually gave us what, you know, I kind of wanted, like a uh, closed mouth on the head, and their King Kong is a lot shorter. But other than that, I like how NECA's is a lot more brown. And, I mean, it's they both have battle damage, but it's a lot more subtle on the Mezco one. Although I do, I kind of like how the sculpt of on the fur is, like, really big. It's big pieces of fur. Although, you know, to NECA's point, that makes King Kong seem a lot uh, smaller because the fur is so big. Like, you know, if you're a giant creature and you have fur, the fur is going to look pretty small relative to your head and your hands and all that. So, I mean, this does make NECA's figure look more giant having smaller fur sculpt, but I mean, it's just cooler having the big lumps of fur to like feel when you, when you hold a big figure like this. And I mean, sculpt, they're both, they have their, they both have their merits pretty much. They both have good sculpts. I really like NECA's though. I mean, it, it is bigger and it looks bigger because of the sculpt. Mezco did get us an alternate roaring head too. And that's, you know, NECA on the left and Mezco on the right. And I gotta say, pretty comparable quality although if you look at the eyes i think NECA did do you know a bit better there these these eyes look a little uh comic booky but then again mezco's figure is based on a book NECA's isn't really based on anything it's kind of the original interpretation with a base head that's kind of reminiscent of the 33 film if anything i guess where mezco did knock it out of the park with accessories though compared to NECA was with accessories because they didn't just give us an alternate head and hands they gave us a little andaro figure which you know, our NECA Kong can kind of hold in his uh, open grasping hand. I mean, oh yeah, it's, it's more like she's hanging there rather than Kong grabbing her. But I mean, she, she looks pretty good with him, the Mezco. This only came with the Mezco one. Whoop, I mean, that's why your NECA figure should have come with 
gripping hands, NECA. And the coolest thing Mezco's Kong came with that NECA's probably should have, really, if you think about it, is broken chains for, you know, shackles that Kong wears. And thankfully, the sculpt on Kong's wrists, the NECA one, is thin enough that he can wear those shackles. I mean, kind of a little too thin, but I mean, hey, they don't slide off. So, I mean, you can, you can picture him, like, caged up like this. And one thing you couldn't do on the Mezco figure that I really hoped since, you know, it happened in the movie, but you can do on the NECA one is clasp it on the ankles! Now, there are only two from the Mezco figure, but I mean, if you had like two of those Mezco figures laying around, you could get four shackles and chain Kong up to your heart's content. So, I mean, pretty cool that those shackles fit on the NECA Kong. I like that, actually. So, do I ultimately recommend NECA's King Kong figure friends? Well, if you're just looking for King Kong to fight your Godzilla, that's also from NECA, probably not. Even SH Monster Arts, it would be even more out of scale with those, so I mean, it really doesn't fit with those guys. I'd actually stick with the Mezco if that's what you're looking for, because it's got a better scale and better accessories, but otherwise it's pretty comparable and everything else. Although this is a very good figure. The sculpt and the paint and the articulation on it are top-notch. We got a little light on the accessories, but my biggest gripe is the scale. And it's kind of weird to say this about a King Kong figure, but he is too big. I mean, I mean you know, King Kong's supposed to be big, obviously, but you won't be in scale with other monsters, at least. Like SH Monster Arts, he's going to be even bigger than those, because he's too big to fit in with NECA stuff, which is already bigger than Monster Arts. So, it is weird to say my biggest issue with the King Kong figure is the scale, but if that's not an issue for you, then I definitely recommend him. Well, until next time, peace out, YouTube!